Let's continue with the uh, Math 120 midterm practice problems. And number 31 is the next one, which says, uh, find the x-intercepts of x squared minus 10x uh, plus 21. So that's the graph. And uh, we're supposed to find the x-intercepts. So uh, where's the x-intercepts? That's going to be wherever the graph is equal to zero. So you set that thing equal to zero, and notice we're going to have to factor it. And the way you factor something like that is you write it as the product of two things, each of which begins with an x. And then you need two numbers in here which add the negative 10 and multiply to 21. And usually, just by thinking about it a little bit, you can usually figure it out pretty fast. Negative 3 and negative 7 work, right? They add the negative 10 and they multiply to 21. And then if the product of, so if you use FOIL on this, you're going to get x squared minus 3x minus 7x is a minus 10x plus 21. So this is the same as this. But this is a much more uh, revealing form of it because now you can see that if x is either 3 or 7, that will make one of these factors equal to 0. And if one of the factors is equal to 0, then anything times 0 is 0. So in other words, one way that this thing could be 0 is for this to be 0. Another way for it to be 0 is for that to be 0. That means that x equals 3. That means that x equals 7. So those are the two x-intercepts. Next question, what are the coordinates of the vertex of the graph? Well, recall that the vertex lies, the x-coordinate of the vertex lies halfway between the x-intercepts. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5 is halfway in between. So that's one way to get it. Uh, the other formula that you should keep in mind is that uh, for anything like this, if you have something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c uh, as, as equal to your function, then the vertex occurs, the, the x value of the vertex occurs, I'll go x sub d there for vertex, uh, at negative b all over 2a. So in our case, it would be in our case, it would be negative of negative 10. Negative of negative 10 would be 10 all over 2 times 1. 1 is equal to a in this case. 2 times 1 is 2, and that gives you 5 as well. So either way, you get 5. So that gives you the x-coordinate. Once you have the x-coordinate, then to find the y-coordinate, you just uh, stick 5 in here, and you can stick it in either form here. I go 5 minus 3 is is 2, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4. So apparently it's, it's down there at 5, negative 4. I could have also stuck the 5 in here, get 5 squared is 25, 25 minus 25, well let's see, what do we have? We have 25 plus 21 which is 46, and if you put a 5 in here, you're going to get negative 50. 46 minus 50 is, again, negative 4. So uh, it's a little bit easier to do it this way, wasn't it? So anyway, there's your vertex. So it goes up like that and like that, and it hits the y-axis here. We weren't asked to find the y-intercept, but it, finds, it gets the y-intercept at 21. You can see that when x is equal to 0, the y-coordinate is going to be 21. So right there, that's a great problem. That, that's really everything you need to know about a parabola. You want to know that x-intercepts, if they have them, they don't necessarily have them. You could have a function that looked like this. And you want the y-intercept, and then you want the vertex. And when you have the vertex, you also want to know whether the function is going down or going up. If it's a positive number in front of the x-squared, it's going up. If it's a negative number in front of the x-squared, it's going down. So that's really all, all there is to it. So now let's apply all this stuff to, to do a nice applied problem, which is the next problem um, on the practice midterm. And what does it say? 
says the ball is thrown into the air from the ground. The height is given by negative 16. Negative 16 t squared plus 120 t. So if you toss it up from the ground, it's going to go up. You're tossing it up with initial ve uh, velocity of 120 feet per second. And this is in units of feet, where t is in seconds. And, um, and so we want to answer some questions. Uh, I'm going to take them out of order here. 34 is really the, the one that needs to be answered before 33. So 34 asks, when does the maximum height occur? Well, just look at it here. It's going up, it's coming back down. The maximum height is going to occur uh, midway between going up and going down. And so uh, how do we find that? Let's see, how should we do it? Um, should we do it kind of the way we just did the last problem? The way we did that was to find the intercepts and then go halfway in between. So, um, in fact, well, yeah, let's just do it. So if I, if I factor a um, negative 16t out of this, I'm going to be left with a t here. 120 divided by 16. Shoot, I need a calculator here. 16 times what gives you 120? Is it, a, it should be a nice number. 16 times, times, Six. Well, let me get a calculator. There's no reason for us to have numbers that don't work out really nicely. So I don't know why we have that, but anyway, maybe let's figure it out here. So uh, 120, 16, 7.5. Well, okay, so 7.5. So if you factor that out, you're going to get a 16t, and you're going to get t minus 7.5 right there. Okay? And, um, and so uh, that's your, that's your um, another form for the parabola. And so we see that the two places where that is equal to 0 is either at time equal to zero or at time equal to 7.5 and halfway in between there would be 3.75 right because 3.5 times 2 is 7 and so it's 3.75 again a little messier than it needs to be I don't know why we chose that one for the midterm but we did anyway there it is so, um, so there's your x coordinate, and um, and uh, another way to have gotten it, recall, is to uh, use the formula that the x coordinate of the vertex you get by taking minus b, which is going to be minus 120, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 16, which is negative 32. Those cancel. Now you can reduce it. You get 60 over 16. Knock it down again. You get 30 over 8. Knock it down again. You get 15 over 4. And 15 over 4 is, is what? 3. That's 12 fourths and 3 fourths. 3 fourths is 0.75. So either way, so there's your there's your x coordinate. And now you want to know, uh, so th that's the time. So that's the time when it hits the top. And now you want to know what that, what that highest point is. And so what do you do? You stick that in there, 3.75. And again, it's uh, needlessly messy here. Let's go ahead and do it. It's going to be 3.75. I'm going to square it. And then multiply it by 16. And then add that to 120 times 3.75. And then uh, add those together. And you get 225 if I did it right. So here it is. So when you stick that in, you get 200 and 
25. So there's the highest point. So that's number 33. Number 35, when does it hit the ground? Well, to find out when it hits the ground, you want to find out um, when will that thing be equal to zero. So let me get rid of this. And I guess we've already kind of solved it, haven't we? Because once we factored it, then, um, then we say, okay, when will this thing be zero? Well, this will be zero at two times. It'll be zero right there when t is equal to zero. That's, where you, that's when you started. And it'll also be zero right there at seven and a half seconds. Maybe that's why we chose it. So that, so that it wouldn't be easy to just to throw in one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So you'd have to kind of do these calculations. I guess that makes sense. Okay, so that's when it hits the ground. So that's 35. Okay, 36. You got yourself a... You got yourself a function that looks something like this. It goes through the point, goes through the point one, two, three, four, zero, four, and it also goes through the point two, zero. And we are asked to find the equation of that graph. Well, the easiest way for me to do it is I just say, well, um, I know that the slope of it is going to be negative two, because notice it goes down uh, four units and it goes across two, so the ratio is, um, is, is negative four to two, so the slope is negative two, so it's gonna be negative two x, and then you have to throw on your y-intercept here, plus 4, and that's all you need right there. Uh, the standard way to do anything, I always like to remind myself what it is. If it goes to the point a, b, and the slope is m, it's just y minus b is the slope times x minus a. So you just go y minus 4 is equal to the slope, which you see is negative 2, times x minus 0, y minus 4 is equal to negative 2x, y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. So there you go. That was number 36. 37 through 40 all involve the line which goes to the point. So this is 36 through 40 now. This is all real basic stuff. So once you know about lines and parabolas, boy, it looks like you have half, half of this midterm done. Um, find the line that passes through 3, 4, and 5, negative 2. 3, 4, and 5, negative 2. So we want the equation of the line, okay? So again, here's given that it goes to the point AB with slope M. This is your equation right there. And so we first have to find the slope. So to find the slope, let's go ahead and just see what these points look like. Three, one, two, three, four, up there someplace. Five, negative two, down there someplace. That gives you a rough idea what this, of what the graph looks like. We can see it has a negative slope. I always like to do that because it's easy to make mistakes with negative signs otherwise. So uh, there, are, there it is. So now here's the slope. The slope is going to be negative 2 minus 4 all divided by 5 minus 3. So that's negative 6 over 2 which is negative 3. So it has a slope of negative 3. Now you can stick either of these values in there. I'm going to go y minus 4 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 3. So you get that right there. And now you multiply it out. y minus 4 is equal to negative 3x plus 9. 
add 4 to both sides, you get y is equal to negative 3x plus 13. So now we've got about everything you need. First of all, that's the equation of the line right there. That answers number 38. The y-intercept, there's the y-intercept right there. It's going to be up here at 13. Go up high enough. When x is 0, it's going to be 13. And finally, we want to know the x-intercept. What's the x-intercept? That's going to be there someplace. The x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So you set y is equal to 0. Bring the 3x over. x is equal to 13 thirds. 13 thirds is the same as 4 and a third. So, uh, so I see a 13 thirds there. Yep, there it is. Okay, so there you go. So that is uh, problems... Um, 31 through 40, and I guess we might as well just make these all groups of 10, so I'll stop it right there and come back and do the last 10 in just a moment.